Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course, and as you can see from the title of this video, I want to talk about reality TV bait and switch. Are some reality TV stars, are they getting a little tangled up into joining shows? Meaning, are they sold on one idea and then it turns out to be something else? And so I want to talk about not just Teresa Judice and the Real Housewives of New Jersey, but I also want to talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville. So we have a few different sound bites to get into. Now, before we do, I ask that you please hit the like button on this video, even if you were to hit the dislike like button. Either one of those work the same, meaning that YouTube will recommend this video to more people who enjoy discussing various topics surrounding reality TV, um, celebrity gossip, celebrity news. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to show style and spirit. I would definitely love to have you. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see in this first soundbite, I'm taking a clip from Carlos King's podcast show with Teresa Judice. He uploaded it to his YouTube channel today. And they're going to talk about season one of the show. And she's going to talk about how she had pause about signing the contract. And she was even questioning if it's real. She was like, I was wondering like, is this fake? What is this? And then I wanna talk about something specific that she will say in the soundbite. And here we go. Because season one, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about season one. So when you were cast for the show, how did they find you? Were you recommended by another housewife that was on the show at the time? Like, how did it come about for Bravo to, to discover you? Um, Jacqueline and Dina recommended me. Yeah, they went to this um, salon called Chateau and Franklin Lakes. And they were looking for, like, beautiful women with a beautiful house, you know, the whole package. So the owner of Chateau recommended Dina and Jacqueline. And then they interviewed them. They love them. And then Dina, then they asked Dina and Jack, like, do you have any other friends? And they're like, you know, they both said, oh my God, you got to interview my friend Teresa. She has these three little girls. They're so cute, the way she dresses them. And um, so they came over to my house and they just interviewed me right in front of my house, like as Joe's doing construction on the house. And Joe wanted no part of it. <laughs> he was just like, and they, they talked to us and um, they're probably like, this is going to be good TV. You know, like I didn't you know. And Joe was just like, whatever. He's like, whatever you want to do, I don't care. You know, you know how Joe was. And um, that was it. And they followed me for 11 and a half months because everybody else signed the contract right away. You know, because you know it took me 11 and a half months to sign the contract. Wow. Wait, that's team. Why is that? I don't know if you know that. Did you? I, I did not know that. Oh, my God. So I didn't. Everyone else signed the contract right away. You know, Dina, Jacqueline, Danielle. Caroline, I was the last one to sign. They chased me, swear to God, for 11 and a half months. They would call me every week, every week. Did you change your mind? Do you want to do it? 11 and a half months. Yeah. Because so, I didn't know what I was going to get myself. I didn't understand that my Jersey, it was supposed to be called Jersey Moms. It was. That's yeah, true. so I was like, you know, I'm like, what is this? I didn't know what, what I was getting myself into. I was like, this is, is this fake? Like, what is this? Like, I didn't know. And then, so then I signed it because Jacqueline, matter of fact, we just, told, I just had her on my podcast. And we, we, this is going to come out next week. That, that airs tomorrow. Yeah, that airs tomorrow. tomorrow. So, turning the tables. So, Jacqueline, I didn't even have a lawyer look at my contract. I signed the contract. Teresa, girl. I know. Well, because this is before the legal stuff. <laughs> Okay, did you all hear that? All right, so the specific thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the she was told the show was going to be called Jersey Moms. Now, of course, we all know that ultimately they changed the title to The Real Housewives of New Jersey. But if you're told, oh, we're putting together a show called Jersey Moms, that sounds very lighthearted, very PG. They want to show you uh, feeding the kids, cleaning up the kitchen, cooking the dinner, putting on those cute outfits that she talked about. 
and taking them to the park and to the mall. You know, that sounds extremely easy and lighthearted. And you're going to pay me for that. You're going to pay me to watch me uh, work my butt off taking care of my children. Sure, I'll sign up for that. You know, after all, mothers should get paid. So Jersey Mom sounds very innocent. And just the fact that, you know, they just interviewed her and her friends at a salon like them. They interviewed Teresa right in front of her house. And her husband was just like ignoring it because he wanted no parts. You know, it's giving very laid back and not a big thing. And then Teresa on her own, she did not even hire a lawyer to look over the contract. So now you really don't know what you're getting into. And it sounds like she did not bother to read it, even in those 11 and a half months. So you did not pay someone else to read the contract, nor did you read it. And then Bravo kept following up with her or their production company kept following up with her. Like, have you changed your mind? Are you going to sign it? Because they've been following her around. Otherwise, they've been wasting time and money paying the videographer to follow her and get footage. But they used her friend Jacqueline to talk her into signing something that she did not read and did not pay an attorney to read for her. And the show became The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Bada bing, bada boom. Now the theme has changed. So I, you know, typically when we think of bait and switch, we hear that definitely in the mortgage industry where uh, someone will promise a potential home buyer or someone who wants to refinance an extremely low and unrealistic interest rate. And then once their credit is pulled and you know they show how much money they can really bring to the table, all sorts of things that can impact the interest rate, then they get offered a more realistic interest rate. Now the person feels deceived and deflated and confused and there you have it bait and switch in the mortgage industry so i just feel like perhaps if you know i and i don't know i haven't finished watching this podcast episode i don't know if carlos king will ask her had you known 15 years ago that jersey moms was going to be what it is today and them showing you and your then husband going to jail him getting deported and you flipping over tables would you still have done that because you knew that that was not jersey moms but i just feel like um especially for people who are new to television, I could totally see them getting caught up in a whirlwind and learning that it's something else. Remember season one of The Real Housewives of Potomac? And Karen Huger kept saying, etiquette lesson number one, etiquette lesson number seven, etiquette lesson number eight. You should serve tea and it should be piping hot. And remember her mother-in-law came over and she brought her a cup of tea and the lady said it was it wasn't hot enough. And everyone was wondering why was Karen Huger saying all these stupid etiquette lessons? I remember her saying, well, we were under the impression that that was the type of show it was going to be. Almost like they know that if people knew that they're going to be provoked to have arguments, perhaps physical altercations, your personal business airing, that you might not star on the show. So I just find this to be so interesting that she was told that it was going to be called Jersey Moms and the interview process was super duper laid back. They came to her house because they wanted to see what the house was looking like. And if when they did aerial shots, it would look super duper huge and extravagant. So you definitely have to peep game. Now, moving right along to Love and Mayor Chuntsville, this is the season three reunion. We're going to get into more uh, show titles. And uh, Marceau is going to, you know, take us down this lane. So I'm going to go ahead and play this sound bite and come back with my commentary. Oh, <laughs> speaking of Marceau, um, when you first learned that this show was going to be called Love and Marriage Huntsville, you sent a scathing email to the producers <laughs> with your disdain for the title of the show. Right. Why did you hate the title of Love and Marriage Huntsville so much? Well, 
I thought that we were doing a construction show. It's like love and marriage. I'm like, wait, I'm good at construction. <laughs> we're not good at love and marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that what we knew that exactly what you said. We're good at construction. Yeah, right. We knew but that when the title was. changed, that we should expect some different things. Yeah, because we didn't. And we I didn't think, think that's part that was a little disheartening. Fair. Just a hair. Yes, a hair. Just the hair. And, Just and, the hair. and Maurice, for you, because you were in law school at the time the show happened, how do you feel when people say this show went from being positive to just arguments? It's a little disheartening uh, because if you look at each one of us individually, we're all examples of success, of success. And the one thing that the show does do a job of is showing a start something and then it shows the success it might not follow everything that we do however you see success from inception to you know to the actual delivery of it so when people say that this went from basically sugar to yeah. right then they're not looking at the whole picture and everybody look at six people i think we've done a lot I don't think that obtaining Juris Doctrine and becoming an attorney, I don't think that, you know, leaving your job and flipping houses and, and, and having uh, social events in the community, becoming an uh, actress and a singer and starting all kind of business, building houses, developing land, land getting a second master's degree. I don't think that's not positive. I think that's, I think they're missing a lot of it. Probably because we got a little arguing going on. But after we argue, we still go get stuff done. Okay. So a couple of things happened in that clip. So Carlos brings up the fact that once Marceau realized that the name of the show was being changed to Love and Mary Chunsville, that he sent a scathing email and he said, Marceau said, I thought the show was going to be about construction. I'm good at construction. He did not want to talk about love and relationships. And even to this day, in those types of scenes, he doesn't give a lot, mums the word, we saw his dinner scene with him, Tisha, and the Fletchers, and Tisha brought up infidelity. The Fletchers owned it, and Marceau even said, well, I would be mad if anyone asked me such a question. So he totally just wanted it to be about the real estate industry in terms of um, construction, because that is his lane. But the title changed, and Kimmy said, we knew that once the title changed, we were going to be in for something different. But then he also used Maurice and Marceau to speak about the positives of being on the show and their accomplishments in the middle of disagreeing and, and having arguments. But still, that is a huge difference to think that you're on a reality TV show that is about construction, real estate. No, we're going to get into your relationships. We're going to get into the holes in your friendships. And we're going to push buttons to get you all to kind of come at each other. So that's that's quite kind of disheartening, kind of sad to think that it's about one thing and then it switches to another. And then there is Martel Holt talking about when he and Melody originally pitched the show to Carlos. And then um, Carlos is going to give him a timeline that miraculously shortens and he's given kind of like an counter offer. So again, you know the deal, I'm going to play this sound bite and then come back with my commentary. And again, the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed. All right, here we go. For TV, how did the show concept come about with you and Mel? Was y'all was still school teachers at the time? Um, no, we were entrepreneurs at the time. Okay. Um, so we, yeah, we were doing property preservation, we were building houses and stuff like that. But at the time, in the beginning, so my friend, her name, her name is Denisha, um, okay. Childress, still my friend to this day. Okay. Um, you know, <clears throat> I was saying to Mel and I, you know, want to do like a little show. And she said, um, I know this guy named Carlos, because one of her friends, I think, did um, like a little interview with him or something like that. And so she um, gave us a little, little website, whatever, and we emailed, paid the little $400 for a consultation here in Atlanta. So, um, came out here, we met Carlos. Like, this one is on Housewives, though. He said, Y'all want to go on the Housewives? 
I was like, hell no, I want to keep my wife. Because I think this is when now everybody getting divorced. Everybody. Going through and then they don't pay the husbands. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, to this day. They still don't pay the husband. I was like, I was real. I was and I told Carlos, I said, no, I want to keep my wife. You know, mm-hmm. so we passed it up. Um, so, but I think probably fast forward like two years later, we did like a sizzle. And um, we reached back out to Carlos. And um, he said he loved it. He said, um, give him a year to pitch it. I was like, cool. <clears throat> I think he called us back about a month later. Um, he said, I can do an ensemble quicker, though. Mm. He said, I can do an ensemble quicker. And um, I'm like, fuck is an ensemble? So he tells what ensemble was. And I talked to Melody. She was like, Shh. I'm like, cool. Let's do it. You know? I said, we got, he has to be our friends and stuff like that. Like, yeah, we got we got friends. We got the Scots. There's a couple other people in proper preservation that, you know, we um, sent to him as well. And um, next thing you know, he came back quick. Said, oh, um, Cause I told him that, like, so the concept that we had, it was a little different from what it is now. Cause okay. we really wanted like the more the HGTV type thing. I was gonna you say know that's what, what it seemed like y'all was supposed to be doing. <sighs> the before and after houses. To to this day, you, wish, this. you wish you had a done that? You know, it's not even a laughing matter, Tasha. It's not even a laughing matter. So it's safe to say y'all marriage would still be together if you was like, if we didn't get on this, if we did not get on this motherfucking ensemble show. Yeah, things would have been totally different, you know, because again, you know, that we, says a lot, man. What? Because that, that was my thing. I told Carlos, I said, I want, I want you to pitch it to um HGTV, okay, first, and then I said, own. But then you know he came back with the ensemble, and it kind of like threw me a little bit, you know, because I didn't really understand it all. You know, what no, I'm basically saying? he wanted to do a Real Housewives of Atlanta, but Huntsville with a different name. You no, know, Goodwill, Melody, and I was. We would have killed HGTV too. We would have killed. Just I think y'all would have too. Oh, we would. I can still see y'all doing that even still to this day. Yeah. So, so yeah. We man, we had we got all that footage. It was good though. We 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 would have killed that. That'd have been nice if you get some of the footage so I could put it in here. You have some of that footage. (laughs) HGTV. I I do, but I'm not. (laughs) No happy moments dealing with Melody. (laughs) Fuck that. Did you, send, Damn, me, did you send me to jail? Hell no. no. Melody, you see, I'm trying. You know, I know you, you think I'm biased because I interview. I'm like, listen, you sat with me. Ariel sat with me. He said, I, I interview everybody. This guy can sit with me. Anybody can sit with me. Like, yeah. that's just, you know, everybody has a right to tell their story. 100%. Right. I told, and so I it's not agree. one and, and, and that's one thing where I think. Oh. Okay. So let's get into all of the interesting details. So. First off, you know, they were told like it would take a year to pitch a show. Now, of course, do I know what's on somebody's calendar? Of course not. You know, perhaps um, CK would have had to found time to put together whatever the format would be for a presentation for pitching a show, plus gaining the appointment or the meeting with the execs at the network to speak with them about the show and um, being prepared to answer their questions. I'm sure all of that does take time to, to schedule all of that. I just don't know if it takes a full year. And then a month into that year, you come right back kind of like with a counter offer to say, well, I could pitch it sooner if it's an ensemble cast. So I kind of feel like when they were initially told it would take a year to pitch the HGTV style show to the network, that was to try and discourage Melody and Martell. Like, oh, wow, it would take that long? So then he could say, he could kind of sweeten them up like, well, if it's an ensemble type show, it could be done much quicker. And then that was essentially done a month later. And then, of course, he knew that Martel wasn't going to know what that was. Just in my opinion, um, I'm a writer in my personal life, but not a professional writer where I've gotten paid for my songs or my poems. But um, I feel like the word ensemble, in my opinion, that's mainly used for actors 
who are starring in TV sitcoms or films. We've all read interviews, articles where you'll hear about this TV show with an ensemble cast. I'm not saying that that term cannot also be interchangeable for reality TV as well, but the only point that I'm making is that I believe to the average person that is entering the reality TV space, yeah, they're not gonna know what the heck ensemble means. But what we do know is that they changed the title of the show to Love and Marriage Huntsville. And that's really what it was. Like I can pitch the show quicker if it's about your interpersonal relationships because watching you all expand your businesses and make people lives better by improving the construction of their home, building homes for people, that ain't my lane, that ain't my thing, you know? But instead, you know, of saying that, it was like, well, I can showcase an ensemble cast show. I can pitch that much faster. And then even Tasha K, kind of like a light bulb went off within her. And she said, yeah, it was like they wanted a Real Housewives of Atlanta type show, but in Huntsville. And then, you know, Martel said, and um, no, because Melody and I would have totally crushed an HGTV type of show. We would have done awesome. And then he didn't even want to do it. He said, Carlos asked him, what, do y'all want to be on Housewives? And he told him no. And then Tasha said, yeah. So he was thinking like a Real Housewives of Atlanta type show, but in Huntsville. Oh my gosh. So you can totally have a vision for a reality TV show, or at least, yeah, you like a vision for how you would see yourself on a show, the concept, the visuals, the content, and then it can totally get changed around. So those who are behind the, the scenes, the production, they kind of hold the keys and kind of call the shots. Oh my gosh. So it's definitely worth being a part of production, in my opinion. But definitely as I was watching um, his interview with Teresa Judice, like eight minutes in, nine, 10 minutes in, she said it was supposed to be called Jersey Moms. And I was like, is this real? Is this fake? I was like, wow, that is so interesting to just be a part of a production and you're questioning you know, if it's real and you seem to be so much in the dark. And it just reminded me of Marcel's comment about sending the scathing email. And it reminded me of this conversation between Tasha Kay and Martel Holt, where, you know, it went from HGTV inspired to a quote unquote ensemble cast. So it's definitely worth talking about. And, and definitely, you know, I'm not saying that any production company has literally done a bait and switch. This is simply my opinion. And I definitely don't think that any sort of switcheroo of a show title or concept is definitely not just unique to one particular production company. It seems to be like a theme. Y'all know that I'm a fan of Dance Moms and I've watched Dance Moms documentaries and there's like interviews with the mom saying, well, when we first started filming, we really didn't know what it was for. And like we hardly got paid anything at all for the first season. So I think this is a thing. It is scary. And I thought the music industry could be really scammy. I guess perhaps it's just the entertainment industry overall, in my opinion. Well, I thank you all so much for checking out this video. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. I always appreciate you all for coming on over to show style and spirit. I hope that you all had a great day today. My coworkers were trying to drive me nuts. And I mean, I'm trying to make myself laugh about it because I'm like, Ebony, you work remotely from home. But yes, even virtually messaging, like they can just, just irk your nerves. So I am hoping for a wonderful Wednesday. I really, really am. I, I kind of have anxiety about it, but I hope that it will be good. And I hope that you have a great day tomorrow as well. And I will talk with you all soon. Bye.